My two favorite hops together are Mosaic and Simcoe. They cannot do wrong. If I go to a bar, I immediately get the Mosaic. Don't care what it is. Like you could give me a piece of trash with Mosaic in it and I'd be like, yes, please. Okay, so we have four different additions during different times. So we're gonna start out at our 30 minute mark with one ounce of Simcoe. You may have noticed that I constantly write on things with Sharpie. Fun fact, if you write on metal or glass with Sharpie, you can get it off with rubbing alcohol. It works like a charm. And if you're working, like I always write on my kegs with it, um, and like they can get wet and it won't wipe off, which is why I switched over from those like chalk marker things. So Simcoe 30 minutes, and then we're gonna do Mosaic 10 is one ounce of mosaic at 10 minutes. Oh, it smells like heaven. And mosaic at five minutes, we're gonna do another ounce. I try to keep my intervals in one ounces, it's just easier and uh, so I have like all my hop inventory on Brewfather and every time I make a recipe it like automatically deducts so this keeps me from having like weird like quarter ounces of hops that I like I'm gonna need a full ounce of. So we're gonna do mosaic five minute one ounce and then we're gonna do a hop stand on this one um, which is also kind of called a whirlpool. I honestly don't know the difference. Um, so we're gonna do, basically when it hits 194, once we start chilling it, we're gonna throw in one ounce of mosaic and one ounce of Simcoe, and then let it sit at that temperature for 10 minutes. So we're gonna stop our pump uh, of the chiller and just let it hang out. Alrighty, so I think we are good to go. And I hope it's almost boiling. All right, we had a good hot break. So I'm gonna set my kitchen timer for half an hour so we can do our first hop addition. I'm gonna use my hop spider in this kettle. Um, it's not meant for this one, but it'll work because there's like really nothing in there. So um, this will basically hold all my hops um, together and not make it so that any of them get into the fermenter. Okay, we've got about 30 seconds left on our 30 minute boil, so I'm gonna grab my hops. Okay, so our first addition is going to be uh, one ounce of Simcoe. Okay, so I set my timer for 20 minutes and I'm gonna throw in my uh, mosaic with a Whirlflock tablet and a little bit of yeast nutrient um, once that's all done and then the next five minutes we do mosaic and then we do our hop stand once it's 194 degrees. Okay I'm about to put in my mosaic for 10 minutes and my Whirlflock tablet and my yeast nutrient that's in here and setting a timer for five minutes. All right, five minute mosaic. So I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes and I'm going to get my immersion chiller ready with my pump and fill my sink up with some cold water and hopefully it works out and doesn't take too long. So you're supposed to put your immersion chiller in around the 10 minute mark or so to sanitize it. Um, but it'll sanitize in five minutes. I actually just put mine all the way at the bottom so it's completely in the liquid, but you can hang it on these little things. 
Okie dokie. So this line is going to go into my sink trap, um, and it'll push out hot water. And this is going to have cold water coming from the other side of my sink. I'm making myself a little bit of a death trap. I'm actually going to move this. So I turn on my heat and now I'm going to start my pump until it gets down to around 194. And then I'll stop it, throw my last bit of hops in, and then keep chilling. Okay, so I turned off my pump. It's around 192-ish, but that's close enough. And that's one ounce of Simcoe and one ounce of Mosaic. I'm just going to mush it around a bit. So the hop stand or whirlpool, it's uh, mainly used for aroma. So we're going to hopefully have a really nice mosaic-y, Simcoe-y aroma in this guy. And I'm going to set it for 10 minutes. Okay, our hop stand is done and it got us down to around 170. So I'm just gonna turn the pump and the faucet back on and chill this guy down to hopefully around 70. That'd be ideal. I think my tap water might actually finally be cold enough now that it's almost Christmas. All right, so we got down to just over 68 degrees, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna pull my chiller Okay, so now that that's all out of the way, I'm actually gonna throw the lid back on just in case there's anything flying around the air. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this into my SS Brewtech brew bucket. Um, my tubing is a little short for what I'm doing, but that's fine. So I'm gonna just attach this tubing to my uh, valve on my... Uh, kettle. Sanitize the crap out of this tubing. I just hand tighten it. You don't need to tighten it that much as long as it's not leaky. Okay, so I've got my brew bucket here. This has got some sanitizer still in it from when I cleaned it um, from my last brew with it. So I'm just gonna dump that and re-sanitize it. I started using these Hudson sprayers for sanitizer and it's so much easier. And again, I'm gonna dump that. All right, so now I'm just going to drop my hose in, you know, re-sanitize it if you touch it, and turn my valve.
So for yeast, I'm using White Labs California Ale Yeast. I have it from a um, other beer that I saved. Um, but if you are gonna buy fresh packets, either you should do a starter, which uh, you can go look at my video to, on how to do, or you're gonna need two packs. I always do a starter or just save from my previous batch because I am very cheap and the yeast is very expensive. So like a pack of yeast is like eight bucks. And if you're buying two, it's like half the cost of your beer, especially if you're doing all grain. Like the DME is expensive anyway. So um, yeah, I'm a penny pincher. So I save my yeast, I do starters. I basically do everything in my power to not spend more money to make beer. So while this is filling, I'm just going to go ahead and pitch my yeast. I've got my mason jar. It's been sitting out for a few hours um, just to acclimate a little bit. I'm going to dump it right in there. So this is going to get going, and I'm actually about to go out of town. So this is going to be sitting while I am out of town, and it's probably not going to be fully finished, but I'm actually going to, instead of dry hopping after, like, primary fermentation is done. I'm going to pitch my dry hop um, in three days and I'm going to do uh, two ounces of mosaic and one ounce of Simcoe. And the reason sometimes you want to pitch uh, before fermentation is done is to prevent um, oxidation. So if you have the yeast still producing CO2 to like force out all the oxygen, when you throw in hops, it's like not a huge deal because like the CO2 will push out any oxygen that the hops like brought into the beer. <clears throat> One thing I really love about this anvil kettle is um, the valve. It basically hits the bottom of the, um, the kettle itself and it transfers like all of the wort in there. It's like, it, it honestly it transfers way better than my claw hammer does. Like the claw hammer, it gets like clogged and it's probably because like there's a screen on that to prevent like a lot of protein from getting into the beer. But I really love this kettle. It's like, it's, it was like $300, but, and I probably didn't use it for long enough to justify that, but it's, it's such a nice piece of equipment. I love it. So this is all done and I'm just gonna, we got five and a half gallons out of this uh, brew. So I guess I should take my specific gravity. All right, I'm gonna take my specific gravity just with a spoon that I sanitized. Cause I need like nothing. All right, so it's 14 and a half uh, bricks. So I'm gonna throw on the lid before I start screwing with calculators. Sanitizing the crap out of my lid. And I'm just gonna put on this airlock until I can get it into the brewery with the Play-Doh airlock. Okay guys, I have a confession to make. I said I was going to dry hop my road sodi after three days, but Turns out I instead went on vacation and completely forgot about it until I got back. So um, I'm going to just dry hop. It's been like way too long. It's probably been since I was supposed to dry hop on December 23rd. It is now January 16th. So I'm a little late um, and I'm just going to go with it. But if you did dry hop, on the third day, like I told you to, um, you actually might have a better beer than I do um, because when you dry hop earlier, you kind of get like more of the juicy characteristics. Um, there's some actual haze forming um, whatevers uh, when yeast does the biotransformation with hops. Um, so you actually might end up with kind of more of a hazy, juicy IPA versus I'm going to end up with more of like a West Coast, probably clear um, IPA, and I'm probably going to find it with gelatin too to make it super, super, super clear. Hashtag make beer clear again. Um, so I'm going to just show you guys my dry hop process now that it's super late. And 
I'm only gonna let the dry hop sit in there for about three days and then I'm gonna keg it, um, cold crash it really quick, uh, fine it with gelatin, and then hopefully get you guys a video of what it actually looks like by next week. So let's get this started. My video is already way too long, even though this is a two-parter already. So um, yeah. So I've got my mosaic. We need two ounces of mosaic, one ounce of Simcoe. I'm hoping there's enough Simcoe in there, but I have so much Simcoe that it doesn't even matter because I got another bag. Um, so I'm gonna use a hop bag because uh, I don't like hop particles floating around, even though people say that because I use a conical, I shouldn't worry about it. I don't like it. I don't care. I don't like it. I'm a creature of habit. So, you know, make sure you sanitize everything. Even though the hops are technically, um, like they inhibit bacterial growth, you always wanna make sure there's nothing on your bags or anything. Don't worry about the hops themselves. Um, so, we're just gonna throw these in and then I'm gonna tie it off and dump it in my fermenter. And this one is actually going in the um, SS Brew Bucket. So this is Simcoe. Please have it off. Oh my God, I'm 0.25 off. Now I gotta find more Simcoe. All right, I don't know if I could be any more embarrassing today, but um, turns out I have no more Simcoe pellets. Um, I literally have no idea how that happened, but I do have some whole cones. So um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do 0.25 ounces of the whole cones, just call it a day, but I'm gonna add some marbles into the bag so it'll drop. Because um, in my experience, um, the, the pellets will absorb enough water to actually drop, but the whole cones, they will stay on top of your beer for literally ever. Okay, so one ounce of Simcoe. I'm gonna throw in my marbles now. Why not? Pat that down a bit. All right, so now we need our two ounces of mosaic. So I'm just gonna throw a knot in here and show you guys how to dry hop. I'm gonna purge my fermenter because you know, oxygen, always a friggin' problem. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna just hopefully be able to reach my bucket because I don't wanna move it because it's been sitting, so it's probably like really got a lot of the yeast down, so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just open three of these guys so that the lid doesn't come fully off and just gonna kind of um, run some CO2 into the headspace while I'm like putting this in. Like a lot of CO2. Get in there. Okay, so hopefully, even though I use some whole cone hops. Hopefully just the fact that I purged the headspace with CO2, and a lot of CO2, it um, will turn out okay. And we'll see in about three days. Alrighty, so now I'm going to clean up. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope I was a little more uh, clear on like how to do things that like beginners might not know. I know a lot of my videos are a little more advanced um, because I, you know, it's just like once you learn how to do something, you just kind of assume everyone knows how to do it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys get some home brewing kits for Christmas and get to try to make this beer because it's a really, really good one. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it.